Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. Wow, that was not monotone. <laughs> <laughs> Today, guys, we are finally, oh my goodness, finally. getting to the dinosaur episode. We promised this four or five weeks ago, something like something that. Something like that, three, four weeks ago. I yeah. don't know, but we had a two-parter and then an interview that also became a two-parter. So we are finally here to talk about the dinosaur. So Fuller, you ready? Let's go. We made it. We're talking about the dinosaurs. Dude, we're at a different... I like this angle. We're talking about the I feel like I'm at a job interview right now, though. But I can see myself and the camera all in one I did that just for you. Because I had an issue with looking at the wrong thing. Because you have to always look at yourself. And so, yeah. My hair's looking good. Did you know for the first... I I know I made a joke about this before, but I don't know if I made a joke on the episode. I think I have about the fact that I went to a real barbershop for the first time ever. Yeah, you ever. Talk, you talked about that I think a couple episodes ago. Yeah, I apparently have a problem. You, you do have a problem. I guess because I, I guess stuck on things. Just talk about it. You're, you, you're but just, can we talk about what you're wearing right now? What I, is I this? Just, I, I just did this like five We're minutes ago. We're trying to upgrade our our merch We're working collections. On. Although I think it. I'd rather go with the four inch. This is a three inch. That's your four inch. No, no that's three inch. That's not. That's also three inch. Yeah. This is three inch. Yeah. No, 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 no. bro. Nah, They're the same. I just got. I, don't think so. I, I, I got a smaller three. chest, bro. I think that's three and a half. No, four. look at the camera. It just, yeah, but it I'm a little person, and matter. I got less less spread. It Either way, matter. welcome back to the show, Mike. What do you think about that interview we had the last oh, two man, weeks? That was so awesome. It was it was a good conversation with Morgan. I, that was, I really thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. And that was supposed to drop earlier, but then you know, poor Morgan got sick. Yeah, and oh so we goodness. had to we had to re-record that one a little bit later. Yep. And, it, and it sounded like it was his birthday. I know. I totally Weird. missed that. I was until like, we had wait, 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 did you say it was wait, your birthday, boss? You're going to, and then we afterwards were like, hey, you should go have steak and potatoes. But we never actually said the words happy birthday. So happy birthday, Morgan. Four months late. Happy birthday, Morgan. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, dude, it's been a heck of a lot of fun inside of this Facebook group, man. Dude, so, so far I'm looking at it. it I feel like more over the last month. I mean, we're beginning of February now. Yep. Like, I would uh, say what February what? February 10th The right 10th. Now. And it seems like more and more people are actually posting inside Thank of the Facebook group. goodness. Which is absolutely awesome. But, you know, we, we did the giveaway. We had our stuff. Maybe we'll have another giveaway here soon. Ooh. But something I always love to do inside this Facebook group is say, what should we banter about? What should we talk about? But before we get to that, before before we get to that, you know, uh, we made the joke. Actually, my brother-in-law, Joe, texted me and goes, dude, you guys just need to add uh, calling a spade a spade to the bingo board. And All someone right. was a like, spade wait, is a spade. we have a bingo board for RTC and our girl Sabrina made a bingo board like months ago. Yeah, we need to repost Update it. that. Well, no, we need to repost it so people that haven't seen the bingo board. And maybe board. move the board around a little bit because you can't Ooh. have the same bingo board every single yeah, time, even right. though we say things differently. I will say, I've had meatloaf the last three days in a row, which has been fantastic. Meatloaf. Meatloaf. That was my present from Beth for saying thank you for doing what she had to do to make sure we only have eight kids. So I had meatloaf for dinner. I had meatloaf for lunch the next day. Meatloaf the lunch for today. You know, I'm so there's happy. some people that have drug addictions. You have a meatloaf addiction. I don't see the problem with that, though. <laughs> What's the problem with meatloaf? Bro, I... <laughs> why, did you, why did you touch my pooch? I don't, I don't got. You I said don't, I don't see the problem. I was just pointing it out. <laughs> I got a dad bod now, man. Welcome to the club, my dude. Friend. Okay, Welcome I used to, to be club. real fit, dude. I was looking at pictures when I bought my Orkney house. Like, when did I buy my Orkney house? Like 2014, so like nine years ago. And I'm like, man, I had a cut. I, I, I was looking good. And then Beth was like, let me cook for you. Let me she make goes, a, here's some meat. No, no, no. She was like, she went Mulan. I mean, she goes, I'll make a man out of you and I'm going to cook you some food. And all of a sudden I have, I have to wash my portions. Now. And now you're starting to look like me, Jimpo. See, and that's what you were saying. You said Janiel. Janiel caused you to have the dad bod. Dude, I'm Not telling the kids. you. I was fit when I met Janiel. I was riding my bike all the time. I was super fit when I met Janiel. And then I went from like this point to... Mmm, be hungry. It point. was it was that cracked chicken, wasn't it? It was cracked chicken. It was everything. She cooks so much good food all the time. Even her health food is so good. It's like, dang man, how do you how do you make something de- terrible so I can complain like a about hot it? Dog. Make a hot no, dog. No, she makes a good. No, because see her hot dog. She's like, I'm making a hot dog, but then she makes chili with it, and then she does like nacho cheese sauce, and so you get a cheese and chili dog. And it's like, oh, you know, is, I've never had like, a chili cheese dog. And then she's like, oh, well, I just made some homemade sourdough buns. 
And so you could just have that. She made Dude. blueberry sourdough bread Dude. the other day, and it was that, like, oh, my that goodness. That sourdough bread that she sent me home with a few weeks ago. I'm telling you, we bro. We pounded that. I'm telling you, bro. So fast. She made like four loaves this week, and I'm like, it's so good. She knew <laughs> what? I, I didn't. I didn't get no notification in the group chat between you, me, and Fuller and Beth. That's I didn't. It, I didn't. I didn't get no notification that your sourdough was, bread's ready. That's because it was gone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> there, there wasn't no sourdough left. <laughs> it was just so gone too fast. It, it was just gone. Well, speaking of food, you know, when I said what should we banter about tonight? There's some really funny ones in here. There's some fun questions, but the one that got me rolling the most was how do you say certain foods? Like, what do you mean? How do you say like foods? Um, tomato, tomato? Pecan, pecan. Uh, well, those were the only two, I guess. Okay. Caramel, so. caramel, crayon, well, crayon. So, okay, wait, wait, wait. Time out. All these things. Okay, so. There is a difference between caramel and caramel. What are you talking about? There's a difference. What are you talking What? There's a difference. Caramel, right? In Indiana. C-A-R-M-E-L. So if caramel, you're going to get. Okay, okay, so. Caramel is a candy. All right, so. C-A-R-A-M-E-L. So go to Starbucks and order a. It depends on how it's spelled. If it's spelled like the candy caramel, it's caramel. Or if it's spelled like the city in Indiana, caramel. Okay, so if it's you're gonna caramel. go get a blank macchiato, you don't talk about how would you order that? Try the one. Well, because hello, welcome to Starbucks. How can I take your order? Uh, okay, how would you order that drink? I, I need a caramel macchiato. No, it's a caramel macchiato. But it's not spelled caramel. It's spelled caramel. Okay, that's the way it's spelled. But the A is silent. Because English English is weird. <laughs> the A isn't silent. All right, though, so here's, a, here's, here's one that's spelled the same way, okay? And this one, okay, so 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 going back to uh, this. Pecan and pecan. Do you say tomato or tomato? Tomato. Tomato. T tomato, that's like, man, we ain't that proper. Come on now. We Midwest. T tomato. Oh, we're coming over to get now, some now this is where we this is where we disagree. Okay, so what's the normal drink we normally drink for the show? Coffee. How do you say it? Coffee. I say coffee. Okay, so I don't say coffee. I call co coffee. I say coffee. I say coffee with an A. Yeah, it's, co it's coffee, not co it's coffee. Co co I'm from Chicago. Coffee sounds Chicago. like you're from New Jersey. Like coffee. I, uh, hey, yo, I'll take a double coffee like from Brooklyn. Coffee. I say coffee. No, it's I say with an it's A. Co I say coffee. I say coffee. All right, so if you say uh, pecan or pecan, how do you say it? Like, like, a, like a blank pie. A pecan pie. Do you say a pecan? You I don't say, say a pecan pie? I say pecan What pie. is wrong with you? I don't know. Dude, his, my, my co-host is broken, ladies and gentlemen. Am I? Or is it you who is broken? My good... Well, you're broken right now. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm broken. <laughs> right yeah, I'm broken. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's one. Oh, 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 Amy kept going with the trend. Ready? All right. Uh, how do you say that... Oh, suck. Uh, the thing that you do when you go to the grocery store and you give them this thing to get discounts. Coupon? You say coupon like with the letter Q, like the queen, or do you say coupon? I say coupon. Uh, what, what's your coupon code? Cause it's a, I say, I say coupon. It's a chicken, chicken coop, coop. chicken coop, coupon, 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 pork coupon, pork, pork coupon. What's another word that people say weird? Potpourri. Uh, crayon. Do you say crayon or crayon? Like, Hey, I want the red crayon. Crayon. See, okay. You're at least normal in that regards. <laughs> At least normal in that regard. Let's see Dude, what else the face. I'm pretty sure says. I'm the look. I can say sixth. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm the normal one, and you're the broke one. <laughs> That's awful. Ooh, Marlene. Okay, our friend Marlene right. from from uh, New Zealand says beans or spaghetti on toast. Well, first off, wait, what? Wait, wait, yes. wait what? Uh, girl, is that a, is that a New Zealand thing? Is toast different in New Zealand than it is here in the states? Because because you always like, have Texas toast with your spaghetti, and then you put then you can make like a spaghetti sandwich, like a spaghetti. sandwich. Sandwich no, no. with your Texas toast no, and eat no, it. You could do that, or you no. can use it to slurp up all the now that like, soak you, up all them juices. But you got to make sure it's got the garlic on it. It's got to have a garlic. Oh. All right, you got to get some garlic on Dude, it. Dude, back in my poor days, we used to take hot like hot dog buns or hamburger buns and make garlic bread out of that. Duh. Dude, yeah. it was freaking awesome. Garlic bread. But I've never heard of putting beans or spaghetti beans. on toast. Marlene, can you can you further tell us like, what that's about? I guess if you make like a, a black bean like patty and do like a black bean burger. I guess I could say see that, but but is it, it, it is that a like, New Zealand thing? Am I gonna just take a can of beans and warm them up and put them on bread? Probably not. Probably probably not. Sorry. All right. Um, last question. Um, I don't know how to answer this. So yeah, last one. I, I I have I don't know because right, let's hear it. because I I I value God's creatures. Um, what's the best? Not true. I love eating deer meat. So if you shoot me one, I will eat it. Um, after you cook it or dry it. Get to the uh, question. What's the best caliber gun for deer hunting? 
Ooh. This guy says, I like my 30.06. 30 out 6, bro. A what? <laughs> it's called a 30 out 6. 30. Spell it. 30 out. It's a 30 out 6, is what uh, it's called. Yacht? Ot? Ot. Like 30. Like O T. Ot. 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 30 out 6. I just say Sam's Club. I just say I'm going to Sam's Club. <laughs> Uh, I'd, yeah, I'd probably Go agree. Kroger. I'd probably I'd probably agree with the thirty out six. Okay. Unless you're into bow hunting. What is that? What is a third? A it's what? A, it's a big rifle. It goes boom. Okay, because I mean, our, our boy Ryan Lauk who wants it. He says he has a he hunts with a pump action thirty whatever six thirty out six. And then this guy says, "I wish I had a 7600. Yeah. And there's Ryan with his beard, dude. You look like, Ryan, you look like you're straight out of Duck Dynasty with that beard in nah, your gun, bro. It ain't long enough. All right. <laughs> but with either that. way, I don't I don't know how to, I don't know how to answer that. Oh, final question. Okay, this no, one's for my man, Jim. final question? No, I don't know how to answer that one. Jim says, what's the right amount of M&Ms to eat in a single sitting? My oh, answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, as many All as of fit them. my belly. <laughs> I read somewhere where in order to work off the amount of calories that you've eaten from one M&M, you have to walk the length of a football field. You know, is that true? Probably, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to look at the calories in the serving size. You know, typically, you get a bag of M&M's, you're like, oh, that's a serving size. No, it's like three and a half servings. You know, Janiel still owes me M&M's, the espresso M&M's. She still owes me. You said she didn't owe you. I know, but she I'm She said I'm, I'll give but, you some. But, but she feels guilty when I do this, so Janiel still owes me. <laughs> that's terrible. That's re- <laughs> but that's this, terrible. those M&M's were so good. The espresso ones, I just kept standing there eating them. Yeah, they were all right. I think I brought this up. Have you had gummy Skittles yet? Gummy Skittles. Like, they look like Skittles, but there's no hard shell. It's just gummy, but it tastes just like a Skittle. <sighs> I thought it was the weirdest crap. My brother walked in with like, a, like the one from Costco, and I pounded like half the bag. It was bad. It was a bad day. So it's not just the meatloaf that's giving you the pooch. No, it's the fact that I don't <laughs> actively play sports anymore. That gave me the pooch. You're, but You're getting to be old. Oh, I'm getting old, dude. I took a 15-minute nap the other day, and I couldn't move my neck to the left side for two days straight. <laughs> It hurts so bad, wow. and I'm not kidding. All right, well, let's jump into the review now. <laughs> Speaking of food, this one's left from because the bologna. The, is it bologna or bologna? It's, it's bologna. Or is it bologna? Bologna. Bologna. All right, it says, oh. please listen to them from the bologna. <laughs> no, 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 no. With like five bucks makes a point. So this review's like, please listen to them. This is a special service announcement. Please listen to them. <laughs> I don't know. We're we're wired. It says, <laughs> "Yo, what up, my dude?" That's what it says. I hope it's my dude. It's like sixteen hey. O's. Yo, not really, but yo yo yo. It's like ten. Okay. I am so thankful for your podcast. I've recently found you guys and have been listening nonstop. I love your views on a lot of the topics you touch on. That is not necessarily old school, but also is not super new age either. Cool. I'm currently listening to the po- podcast, If God Cares, on how we dress. Oh, and I totally that was a good one. agree with your point. Well, we didn't even fully agree. Yeah, we did. Did we? Yeah. See, this is your problem. You don't remember nothing. This is the problem with our marriage. Too here. many kids. <laughs> Too many kids, guys. <laughs> I've grown up in an old school church where you're always judged on what you wear, and I get a lot of complaints when I wear something different. But your podcast made me realize that God cares more of how I truly follow him. Preach. Thank you so much for all the topics and all the laughs. I've been able to use your material and teach to our youth group in our church. Oh. I also love that you guys send Bibles to people who need them and do not expect anything in return. Uh, Thank you for being true to the word. Much love from Stephenville, Texas. Oh, another Texas. God bless y'all. You know, I feel like we need to do an RTC meetup in Texas. Texas. That's an excuse. You know why we're there? That's the excuse for an expense report. Why there? We could just go and be like part of the extras of the chosen too because that's where they do a lot of the filming wait 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 wait. pause they they record it in texas yeah bro where really you, where you been I, that's i have that's been listening to something from the chosen so, like like the guy they interviewed the guy who plays judas and it's like someone has to play him yeah like, and he does a phenomenal job phenomenal. With but uh did scary. you know dallas used to only live like right outside of chicago yeah he was the me i had to go digging because he because he i was listening to an episode where they he was talking about how they casted the roles right and he used the guy who plays jesus in a short film that he made for his church in illinois that's all he said like oh what church were you a part of he was part of jane mcdonald's vertical church he was on the og media team for vertical church wow. which which vertical worship comes out of sure. all the harvest network so if you have a harvest church near you that's where they all came from and he was like the lead film guy for wow. vertical church. That's now cool. Jane McDonald kind of like self-employed imploded the whole mug because that was 
you know, that was rough to watch. But either way, I thought it was really cool that he was a local church guy using his media skills. Yep. So now he lives in Texas. 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 I don't know where at in Texas, but he lives in Texas. Not in Illinois. Not in Illinois, but in Texas. But so they literally film it. I I thought they would so go they, out back they, to the Middle they, East. To they film. do a lot. Of, they're set. Well, so they have they they rent a place in Utah. Now that makes sense. The mountainous terrain. They okay. do they do a part in Utah, but they do a bunch of the screening. Like when they did the feeding of the five thousand, it was uh-huh. in Texas. Really? It was. Yeah. Man, they do a really good job not making it look like the States. I know. It's amazing. Dude, okay. So I was watching one video from the shows where Dallas yep. Jenkins was with the, the, the who, who's the guy that plays Jesus? Jonathan John. Rumi. I know, like Jonathan Rumi, because he's a devout Catholic. And right. Actually, he actually uses the word, I mean, I'm a, I'm a born again Catholic is how he words it, which I right. think is fascinating. Uh, but they got to go meet the Pope. Yeah, and so they that were was talking like, about. That was like a year and a half I know. Ago. I just watched the video, though, of them talking bro, about bro, what so it's behind. like to. Bro, I'm catching up. I thought you were like on the cutting judge edge. Judge not, lest ye be judged. I thought you were cutting edge of like like the culture nowadays. Don't yeah, you I just know? finished Big Bang Theory last night. <laughs> Dang, you're really behind. <laughs> I've been keeping up with other shows and other things called kids. And um, Don't lie. That's, that's, that's Don't lie. Because that's, that's if it was Madam Secretary, you'd been caught up way be- before. I paid for... Like Paramount, yeah. I, I paid see? for Paramount Plus the first day it came out see? just to watch Madam Secretary. Um, but you know they're talking about the the different views of Protestant and Catholicism and these crossovers, and I'm like, man, the Chosen's having a lot of really cool conversations among themselves, right. even with the actors yep. and and their stories and whatnot. So it's kind of cool to see these actors who are portraying the disciples or portraying Jesus or part of the film crew. And they're having these bigger conversations around the gospel. But you know, one thing they haven't talked about, which I wish they would dive into dinosaurs. <laughs> but we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about it today. So buckle up y'all. <laughs> so this was a conversation that was brought up a few different times in the oh Facebook. My goodness. Room, man. It's been brought up so many times. It's like, all right, let's talk about which it. I guess because my son loves dinosaurs so much. I don't even like think to have these conversations. I just remember <laughs> <laughs> the, the one episode when you, we were talking about in the intro and you were like, roar. Roar. <laughs> roar. Because <laughs> you thought it was the dinosaur episode. Roar. No, we were talking about nope. the Nephilim. Yeah. Right. Or Nephilim. Or nef- the, ne- Nephilim. Whatever you want to say. The Nephilim. The really giant people. And I thought we were talking about dinosaurs the that great week. Man I screwed of, up. The great men of old. That was literally five episodes, six episodes ago, so something I like that. I don't know. But we're... Wait, wait, Anyways. Oh, Rawr. Let's do it. Rawr. All right, so we're talking about dinosaurs today. Right. Let's do dinosaurs. it. Dinosaurs. Why are we talking about this? And why are we talking about it? Because you asked us to talk about Let's it. Let's do it. So we're going to do the best we can, and forgive us if we butcher. Like Mark said, judge not, least you be judged. I don't know. Well, we're going to roll with it. We're going right. to roll with it. Let's so, do it. I love what the uh, what our friends at what in the uh, gotquestions.org has to say. That was impressive. <laughs> I know. That was really impressive. Uh, uh, about the topic of the dinosaurs. They say, the topic of dinosaurs in the Bible is part of a larger ongoing debate within the Christian community over the age of the earth, the proper interpretation of Genesis, and how to interpret the physical evidence we find all around us. Those who believe in an older age for the earth tend to agree that the Bible does not mention dinosaurs because, according to the paradigm, Dinosaurs died out millions of years before the first man ever walked the earth. The men who wrote the Bible could not have seen living dinosaurs. And that, that's if you believe in older than evolution because they died way before before and, humans showed up. And we talked about this in, and can you have faith and and science? And we talked about old, old earth creationists and new earth creationists yep. and kind of dove into that whole topic. But uh, those who believe in a younger age for the earth tend to agree that the Bible does not or does mention dinosaurs, though it never actually uses the word dinosaur, quote unquote, quote unquote. Instead, it uses the Hebrew word tenem, which is translated a few different ways in the English Bibles. Sometimes it's sea monster and sometimes it's serpent. It is most commonly translated as dragon, which is so dope. Dragon. Uh, the tenon appear to have some sort of giant reptile. These creatures are mentioned nearly 30 times in the Old Testament and were found both on land and in water. Which is fascinating. It is because fascinating. Now, I do have to say, they're called prehistoric marine reptiles, okay? Well, they are not dinosaurs if they're in the water. If they're in the sky, they're just prehistoric. No, no, bro. We call them. 
flying dinosaurs, swimming dinosaurs, and land roaming dinosaurs. Elliot's, <laughs> Elliot's going to correct you if he hears this episode, boss. Elliot, I love you, buddy. He's uh, a T-Rex in the family. Lennox is a Triceratops. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> That's, That's their true. stuff. That's true. So when we talk about dinosaurs, what are some of the references that we can see uh, tenon in, right? That's mm-hmm. the Hebrew word that they're they're talking about here. So the big one, right, comes from Job 41, and that's talking about Leviathan. The Leviathan, yep. The Leviathan. And, man, this is a lot of reading. Why did I put so much in here? <laughs> Don't be monotone. Yeah, that's the big thing. So Job 41, can you pull in Leviathan with a hook or tie his tongue down with a rope? Can you put a cord through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he beg you for mercy? No, I will say this is when Jesus. This is when Jesus was talking to Job and, and being like, "Who were you with this? Could you do this? Right. Can you do this?" And then right. he goes into like, "What about the Leviathan, boss?" Yeah. So he's talking. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, will he make a covenant with you so that you can take him as a slave forever? Can you play with him like a bird or put him in the leash for your girls? Will traders bargain for him or divide him among the merchants? Can you fill his hide with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Lay a hand on him. You will remember the battle and never repeat it. <laughs> Basically saying, he going to destroy gonna you. going to die. <laughs> uh, any hope of capturing him proves false. Does a person not collapse the very sight of him? Uh, he must have been pretty big because it scared the tar out of him. Uh, no one is ferocious enough to rouse Leviathan, who then can stand against me. And it goes on from there. But that's all Job 41. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but that's basically what it's saying. It's God saying, hey, yeah, you guys can't even handle this big old Leviathan, this tannin, and, and, and without fearing and, and dying and not surviving the battle. And you're going to question me. That's what God is talking about. Um, but yeah, there's a whole thing of, of description of. Now, it does say, though, if you keep going on, we're talking about his, his snorts flash with lightning. Yep. Smoke billows from his nostrils. Right. His sparks breath sets fly coals out. Ablaze. Right. His heart is hard as a rock, his heart is a lower millstone. He has scales on his belly. I'm, 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 so, I'm just summing up. Like straight up was a description. Beast. Straight up description of what we consider a dragon, right? Hey, man, he, he he's what does it say? Uh, his eyes are like rays of dawn. Flame flame torches shoot from his mouth, which means he breathes in fire. Fiery sparks fly out. Smoke billows from his nostrils, as from bur- boiling pot or burning reeds. His breath sets coals ablaze, and flames pour out of his mouth. Strength ar- resides in his neck, and dismay's dances before him. The folds of his flesh are joined together, solid as metal and immovable. Man, that sounds scary. Like the dude's a freaking monster. His heart is hard as rock, as hard as a lower millstone. Ooh. And, and, and so we, we could yeah. see this passage in Job. Okay, so they're talking about Job. Is he talking about like a – because Job is a version of poetry the way it's written. So it's like, oh, maybe right. this was just an allegory or maybe this was just a piece of the puzzle. Like we're not really talking about a beast, right? Well, like, I don't know because it's you comparing – you know, if we take that that Job 41, he's comparing God saying, hey, you guys can't stand against this beast. How are you standing against me? Right, but what I'm saying, someone might have the objection and say, well, the same way that Satan appeared in heaven, can we really fully believe it? Is that really how it worked, or is that just how we kind of explain it? So, like, is it real or not? And what I'm setting you up for is there's other passages that talk about the Leviathan, right? There there are. There are a few more passages. Uh, there's one in Isaiah 27.1 where uh, Isaiah says, On the day of the Lord, with his relentless, large, strong sword, will bring judgment on Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisted serpent. He will slay the monster that is in the sea. Oh, so okay. Well, my question though is: This first talking about like the actual day of the Lord, like Revelation, Jesus coming down, yeah, and uh, maybe. And is he talking about Satan? Like, is Satan the serpent of old? So is Satan the Leviathan? Maybe, but why is Satan? When was Satan ever described as being in the sea? He will slay the monster that is in the sea. So the Leviathan is in the sea. Well, I mean, that's um, what Isaiah's saying, right? Right. So let's go back up. But it talks about he has fire from his nostrils. Yeah, but it doesn't say his heart is hot. Well, no, 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 it doesn't. Can you fill his hide with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? So. Sure, sure. You've yeah, Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you'd think that, okay, he's probably in the sea, right? This is more of a sea creature. So what's Psalm 74, 13 through 14 says? What does David say? He says, you divide the sea with your strength and smash the heads of the sea monsters in the water. You crush the heads of Leviathan. The heads? Okay. Ooh, uh, that's plural. Uh, you fed him to the creature of the desert. So wait, wait, hang on. Time out a sec. David, you telling me that there's something that ate the Leviathan? There's creatures in the desert that ate the Leviathan after you destroyed him? 
Because it says you crushed the heads of the Levi- Leviathan. Right. And was Isaiah after David? Uh, I thought so. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure. So, so pretty is sure. Leviathan. So has Leviathan got like? Well, I'm kids? asking is Levi or is Leviathan just like, like okay? Remember how this they, is real conversation right here because right, there ain't we're, nothing we're, best at no. Um, so like with the Nephilim, like some people believe that it's just that like which I even kind of lean to in some regards is they're just the giant like there's these giant men. So are Leviathan just these giant beasts? Uh, possibly, but you know, again, we have to go back to the description that we see out of Job, mm-hmm. right? Which is it is pretty explicit, right? It's 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 pretty detail oriented. Why would there need to be that much detail in it, right? Mm-hmm. Unless it was something that was possibly true. I don't know. I don't. Know. Let's keep reading. All right. So Psalm one hundred four twenty four through twenty six says, "How countless are your works, Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures." Here is the sea, vast and wide, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There are ships, uh, there, there the ships move about, and Leviathan, which you formed to play there. Huh. So Leviathan's playing in the sea. It's just another term of, of you see that word Leviathan used again, which is the tenon, right? That's that Hebrew word. Which, okay, tenon. now, but some people think the, like the Leviathan could be more of like an elasmosaur. Are you tracking with me on a Lasmosaurus or a, or a yeah, prehistoric? It's, it's a big looking dinosaur platypus thing. It's a mar- prehistoric marine reptile, bro. Yeah. You got to watch Dino Dana more. No. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, like, you know, there's been a lot like the Loch Ness Monster. Like, is this the Loch Ness Monster is what it's, is it talking about? Sure. You know, like, I, like I'm and, generally curious. Right. Yeah, and you know what? That's a good question. And maybe we'll talk about it in a little bit. Oh, okay. I'll shut my mouth. Let's may, keep going. May, maybe. I don't know. Let's keep going. I want you to make I'm, sure you get I'm, through your content. Uh, pff, I ain't got much. I'm just bringing out what I could find. All right, so uh, that uh, so that's Leviathan. So we we talked about Leviathan. So then let's let's talk about Behemoth. Right? There was another another creature called Behemoth, and where's it found? Oh, it's found in Job 40. So the chapter before Leviathan, you hear about Behemoth. Okay. Uh, 15 through 24 says, "Look at Behemoth, which I made along with you. He eats grass like cattle." Look at the strength of his back and the power and the muscles of his belly. He stiffens his tail like a cedar tree. The tendons of his thighs are woven firmly together. His bones are bronze tubes. His limbs are like iron rods. He is the foremost of God's work. Only his maker can draw the sword against him. Whoa, that's a pretty big one, right? Sounds like a Brachiosaurus to me. That's what I think, too. The the hills yield food for him while he sorts of, I'm sorry, while all sorts of wild animals play there. He lies under the lotus plants, hiding in the protection of marshy reeds. Lotus plants cover him with their shade. The willows of the brooks surround him. Though the rivers rages, Behemoth is unafraid. He remains confident, even in the as the Jordan surges up to his mouth. Anyone, uh, can anyone capture him while he looks on or pierce his nose with snares? Mm, sounds like another pretty big creature of big some creature, sort, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So uh, could it be that dinosaurs were created before mankind and were just referred to, right? Maybe this is something that was happened before, you know. Maybe maybe it's just the, the tales of old, as you would say, right? right? That's what I was thinking so, too. So maybe, maybe, right. maybe in that like description, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's why God's using it, right? It's it's a descriptive, uh, mythological. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Well, let's let, let's see what the Bible has to say. So Genesis one twenty through twenty five says, "Then God said." Now you sound weird. Why? Because you're you're, you're, you're too, too much inflection. Too much inflection. <laughs> <laughs> then God said, let the water swarm with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the large sea creatures and every living creature that moves and swarms in the water. So why did he make the distinction there in t- verse 21? So God created the large sea creatures and every living creature that moves and swarms in the water according to their kinds. I mean, think about it. We have the, the big blue whale that's still freaking like freakishly sure. huge. Sure. It's just it's interesting how he said large sea creature. It's just interesting, right? I'm just pointing right. out there's, there's large there, sea creatures. There, there, there's a difference living between creature living creatures in the water. Right. There's a difference between living creatures and large sea creatures. Yep. The Bible makes that distinction. Uh, he also create created every winged creature according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters of the sea, and let the birds multiply on earth. 
even evening came and then morning the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock creatures that crawl, and the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. So God made the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds and livestock according to their kinds and all creatures that crawled on the ground according to their kinds. And God saw it was good. So when was that? I, 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 when was uh, when would that, that, that all take place? Oh, that's uh, creation. 23, verse 23 said fifth day. When was man created? Sixth day. The sixth day. Why you set me up for that? <laughs> so come on. So okay. Well, that's one scripture, right? Don't build a theology out of one scripture. Well, what's 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 another one? Genesis two one through three. So the heavens and the earth and everything in them were complete on the seventh day. God had completed His work and He had done and He rested on the seventh day from all His work that he had done. God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy for he rested from all his work of creation. So the important part here, right, is what did he, God do? What did he say? So in the heavens and the earth, everything in them were completed, mm -hmm. which means he made every creature he was going to make. Mm -hmm. And they were going to produce like we saw in Genesis one after their kinds, mm -hmm. but he wasn't going to go create new species. It was just, he created that. And then they, they produced after that, mm -hmm. right? That's what that's what that scripture says to me. Yep. All right. So I'm, so, I'm keeping so, my opinions so, locked in. I'm so, my opinions so locked he in. he created everything during these times. All right, but but we still have, uh, you know, we we still have something, right? Who who knows? Uh, I don't remember why I brought this one in here. You're talking about the fact of if they lived at the same time, probably because of day is a day. Oh, so God yeah, created so, on day one day, the next yeah, day so, was man. So, right. So, yeah. So, okay. So now we're tracking. Thank you. You're welcome. So now we're tracking. Okay. So we see that there, all right, we saw a fifth day, these, these sea creatures, these animals, the sixth day man was created and the seventh day God rested after he had created everything he was going to create. But what happens, you know, it, it was there, was it an old, was it an old earth still? Could that one day, you know, the, there's that scripture that says a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is unto a day. You know, there, there's that scripture. That's the one we always hang on to is so we, there's really, you know, in that creation process, did it actually a day mean a day? Did a day mean a day? Uh, so we look, we look at, at Genesis two, one through three, and God rested from, from, uh, his creation after the seventh day, right? That he took that Sabbath. Exodus 20 verses eight through 11 talks about a Sabbath. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You are to labor for six days or Yamam and do all your work. But the seventh day Yamam is a Sabbath day to the Lord, your God. Yamam is the Hebrew word, which is also the same as what we see up in the Genesis two, one through three passage. Mm -hmm. uh, you must not do any work. You, your son or daughter, your male or female servant, your livestock, your resident alien who is sitting with you at the city gates. For the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them in six days. Yamam, same Hebrew word. Then he rested on the seventh day. Yamam, same, same word for that day, right? The, the morning and the evening. Uh, therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and declared it holy. Yamam is an ancient Hebrew word is from the form of yom, a word nearly universally recognized as having multiple literal meanings, including a 24 hour day, daylight hours, and an indefinite period of time. So it's used in that same aspect, but we typically say it's a day, right? Because other places where that same word is used, it's always translated as a 24 hour period. We also looked at it. We see in Gen the Genesis one passage where it talks about morning and evening right when we talked about this in the faith and science mm -hmm. episode a little and bit i do more. think there is some 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 room to give and and people are going to be really mad when they hear me say that but i do think there's room in their space at the orthodox christian table to view these days as okay is day five really just one day or do we really not know how long it was or the level of how long were Adam and Eve really in the garden? Well, so I, I'll give you, you know? the we don't know how long they were in the garden right. aspect. But we do know how long the fifth day was. Because at the end of the fifth day of creation, there was morning and evening. Right. When, right. How often does morning and evening happen? Oh, it's, all, it's only one and one. And one. It's, like a, it's it. a once in a 24-hour period, right? right? Morning and evening. And so, I'm going to say where, where my brain sometimes thinks is the fact of, because I've always wondered this, you know, I've, I've always had the question of why did, 
Now, I know the answer of why, but it's like, why would God take six days to create all these things and the seventh day he rested when he could have all done it in like well, that, you know? Because he's setting it up. And that's why some people say, you know, it was an allegory to set up the seven days of creation. Was it a literal seven days or was it not? Um, you know, I do think there is some room in there for disagreement. I'm being honest with you. I know I definitely lean towards the fact of a literal seven day because we see that's how God set up the world. That's how we see we're supposed to recognize Shabbat in terms of the Jewish customs. Right. That's how Jesus recognized it. That's right. how the apostles recognized it. That's how we recognize it today. I mean, there's always been a universal so even, first day of the week. I mean, obviously we've had different calendar setups, but there's always been a work for six, rest for one, or work all seven, or work for five, rest for two. So like, you know? but why? Why are we doing that? That's what I'm saying. Like it's the, the world is just set up that way. Like but, like our actual planet Earth is set up that way. Right, but it's it's a remembrance thing, right? Yes. We do we do our labor for six days and rest on the seventh as a remembrance because that is what God did. Correct. He created the earth in six days. He rested on the seventh. Yep. That's the Sabbath. And so if we take that to be a six literal hour six, six literal uh, days of creation, then we would have to say that man walked with dinosaurs. But uh, right. then there's a lot of people who have either old earth creationism or theistic evolution that then gives them the opportunity to say, you know, there is the Jurassic and the Jurassic and the, all these different periods. And that's why we have all these different layers of sediment and all that kind of different stuff. And I can still see how people even through this point are wrestling together. You know, and I'm glad you brought this next question up, and I'll kind of let you segue into it. Well, but. well, before we leave this, oh, there's one more verse. No, I want to I want to continue on with okay. this conversation right okay. now because when we look at each individual day, I have a I have a problem with I don't see I see se se sequential things happening here, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I will give you between the the seventh day and the time when they were kicked out of the garden is an unknown period. Yeah, because we time. just don't know. We don't know how long they were actually because in there. there was no death before sin. And sin did not come in until disobedience to God. Correct. So it could have been one day to us, an evening in the morn. It could have been a million years. I don't know, right? I, I It doesn't clearly spell out. Now, I would think, I would think that I would lean more towards the way things progressed in the scriptures and how they kind of seemed clueless and oblivious to it all. I would think it would be sooner rather than later, Adam and Eve. Now, that's just me and my interpretation of me reading the scriptures. I don't know for sure, and I'm not going to say that I know for sure. And there's a lot of, and that's the thing is, there's a, right now, there's a, and I, again, I'm not trying to be wishy-washy, but there's like, there's a lot of works right now, like, like William Lane Craig, just, yeah, not William Lane Craig, I say William Lane Craig, because I listen to British talk shows too much where they interview him, and they say, they say Bill Craig, um, but like, he has this book that just came out talking about like, the, the historicity of Adam and Eve. And he believes that, yes, Adam and Eve are real people, but there were Neanderthals-type cre creations around it. And I know Ken Ham will have the idea of the fact that if you start with the Bible and then you have all your lens pointed out everywhere else instead of start with science and then try to pop it into the Bible and you have those different struggles. But with this conversation, I really think the biggest thing comes down to, and this is why I've always had this question of, okay, so... Is there a way for us to have archaeological evidence? I'm not, I'm not trying to say the next question. This is really where my brain goes. Is, you know, can we actually say that dinosaurs walked with man? Because I think the biggest question that Elliot has asked me, that sure. other kids have asked me, teenagers have asked me, where they say, okay, so if you can pull up dino bones next to human bones, well, then, yeah, I will believe that they all walk together. All right. But are we able to? But we need to backtrack first. But, but, but I'm saying we can go that way to, in order to come back. Well. Because if we say they all walk together, well, then that would prove well, a six-day little okay, creation. But, but before we get to that, right, uh -huh. we're, we're still I'm still wrestling with you on, on this aspect a little bit. Okay. Because I have to look at it. You said, okay, you you know, Ken Ham would look at it through the Bible and try to make science fit, whereas William Lane Craig would make, like, the science, science and try to make the Bible fit. Not try to make the Bible fit, but interpret them both together, I would say. So I would disagree with that approach. To which one? To the, to the look at science and then try to fit together the Bible. Why? Because is the word the inspired word of God? Yes. Is it 100% correct? Yes. Is it a hundred percent true? But is it a hundred percent a science book? That's what people ask. But you're, you're, see, that's people in a science lens trying to fit the Bible in. Okay. Okay. I'm not trying to do that. I'm saying that God is saying, right. 
Exodus 31, 16 through 17. The Israelites must observe the Sabbath, celebrating it throughout their generations as a permanent covenant. It is a sign forever between me and the Israelites, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, but the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Now, if you ask William Lane Craig, well, that six days was not a literal six days. It was a figurative. That's what he says. And well, I don't know if he says that. But he does say that. Oh, does? Okay. And that's the problem with taking your scientific view first, right? I have to go by what I know is the truth. Mm-hmm. Scientific view has changed so much, and it still continues to evolve every single year, right? New discoveries happen, and they change their theology. Yes, I, know. I realize I used that word evolve. I thought that was really that was clever. Keep going. So, but but it changes, right? The the, the perception of science changes. We learn right. we learn new things. Ever did you know we still haven't fully mapped the human DNA? Mm-hmm. haven't fully mapped it yet, Which but we're wild. still learning, right? We're oh, still yeah, learning. I'm learning a lot about genetics right now with my kids. So what yeah. I'm looking at is I'm going to take the Bible, which I know is 100% truth, okay, and I'm going to use that as my lens. And I will say the Bible has held up for all the things, and it has shown in a decent and orderly creation. It's not chaos. It's not chance. It looks like it was all fashioned together. So, And so my question is, as long as someone believes in that point, does it really matter how they believe we got here from A to Z? Sure, maybe. You know? So po- point in case, right? Uh, okay. I'll give you an example. King David. Okay. Did you know that scientists and archaeologists did not believe King David actually existed until 10 years ago? And why? Because they, fi- really? they finally found some archaeological evidence that King David was written about that he actually existed. Really? Up until 10 years ago. I did not know that. They, didn't, they thought it was just a fairy tale from the Bible. Okay. They never really believed that he actually existed. And there's other characters in the Bible that they don't believe existed until they're finding evidence that they do. That's like a big, massive suck it from so, the Jews. But that's, like, what, but that's what I'm saying, right? So we can go, you know? I'm going to rely on science to prove the Bible. And it's like, no, that's, first of all, all science is going to do is going to muddy the waters because it's like me saying, uh, I'm going to read Greek before I know how to read anything. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, it, You can't look at it that way, right? You have to learn the basics of the language you know, and then then from there you can study another language to learn that language, right? If you know English and you don't study how English works, how are you going to read the context or understand the context to read about Greek? You know what I'm saying? Take a Greek book. I'm not understanding because okay. people who speak only Spanish and not English. Take a Greek book. Right. And the Greek book is explaining you Greek in English. In English, gotcha. Okay, okay. Or if you don't or understand explaining English, explaining Greek in Spanish or in right. French or in right, exactly. Portuguese, whatever, whatever language. Russian, right. yeah. Okay. Unless you understand that language of how it's explained in the Greek to you, uh huh. You'll never know. Gotcha. I'm right. tracking. Yeah. All right. So it's like if you don't know how to read, then how are you supposed to know how to read? Kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So right. But what I'm saying is, is does it? I'm not saying does it. I'm saying there are. I think there are seats at the table for different viewpoints. This is where I think Ken Ham is, is a little arrogant. Is I do think there are seats at the table for other viewpoints of how creation happened. As long as you say God created, I'm not God saying, established, and God orchestrated. I'm not you know? saying Ken Ham's right. I'm not saying William. I'm saying Scripture is right. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm saying anybody who does not look through the lens of the Bible first. Is going to is is mistaken, and 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 you and I both agree with that. That's that's all I'm saying, and and you and I both will agree the, with that. That's now, if the someone base had to pin me I'm down, saying. say, Mark, what do you actually believe? I'd say, well, I I I believe in a six day literal creation because if you point if you start at Jesus, this is all what Jesus taught and believed and learned in, right. in Torah school, and that's how he taught it as well. So it just it, it all lines up. It all well, makes sense to, to me. Again, you have to put on the lens of I'm looking at anything through the lens of scripture, right? Mm-hmm. Through the words of God, because God is not a man that he should lie. Now I know men lie, make mistakes, cheat, try to get ahead. That's what men do. Mm-hmm. That's science. Science. Well, no, I don't want to get weird science because most early science were, were Christians, you know, sure. because but they said, I want to study the magnitude and glory not, of God. I, you know? I said, get things wrong, uh-huh. lie, cheat, and try to get ahead. My first thing was get things wrong. Mm-hmm. And I think even though they were Christians early on, they still got stuff wrong. Well, because they were, they they were trying to figure man. it out. They're, they're trying to figure it out. They're man. Right. And we're going to make mistakes. That's what I'm saying. If you put your faith solely in science to prove the Bible, you're already behind. It's just like if you, if you put archaeology first ahead of what the Bible says, you're already going mean, to. Because might, the it's Bible, a, it's has a lot of, Bible is a lot of archaeology. Now, yeah. If you use the Bible as your starting reference, it proves a lot of things. And I'd say ba- archaeology backs it up. 
Sure. And a lot of science has backed up the Bible. Right. And, you know, I guess the, the thing we have to make sure we get back on track is why are we having this discussion right here? Because it all goes back to could dinosaurs walk with man and man right. walk with dinosaurs? You yeah, know, right. because if there was a long gap, millions of years, there was a chance that maybe they didn't walk together. Well, and but is there archaeological proof? Right. So of, so, of the dinosaurs so, walking with yeah, them. Yeah, is there archaeological proof that the dinosaurs and humans coexisted? Right. So there's a couple of things that, uh, and I actually don't, I'm not prepared for this part. So, so I don't know. The, the Stegosaurus of Cambodia, and I, I put two things in here about that, but I'm wondering, I think I got that one wrong. That was supposed to be something else. Uh, I'll have to go back and look. Uh, so the ruins of... Oh, the second one's supposed to be like the, the Brachiosaurus, the Brontosaurus, or the Apatosaurus. Yeah, like something like that. Any, keep going. The Petroglyph or whatever. Yeah, but anyways, the Stegosaurus of Cambodia, the ruins of Ta Prom, I'm probably going to butcher these words, but that's all right, uh, which stands today in the overgrown dr jungles of Cambodia uh, were chosen by one of the major pr uh, preservation societies to be the left to be left in its natural state as an example of how most of the Ang Angkor looked on its discovery in the 19th century. Intrinsically carved statues and stone columns filled the temple monastery. On the stones, the ancient depicted the ancients depicted animals, people, gods, various plants, and a host of other decorative images. But one column of carvings maintained a special interest to those uh, in dinosaurs and human coexistence. Concerning this particular column, Freeman and Jacques wrote, on the angles and corners of the porches and numerous small scenes and representations of animals, both real and mythical, page 144. Of special note, the authors wrote about one of the carved animals saying, among the vertical strip of roundels, in the angle between the south wall of the porch and the east wall of the main body of the Gopura, there is even uh, there is even a very convincing representation of a stegosaurus. Uh, in the other book of Angkor, Jacques Jacques, I don't know, and Freeman, yeah, Jacques, uh, were even more emphatic, saying that the animal bears a striking resemblance to a stegosaurus. Oh. Uh, the next one is the Apatosaurus of southeastern Utah. Apatosaurus. Yeah, thank I got you. you. The Apatosaurus of no, Southern... Not, not Apatama, Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus. Like you pot a source. Apatosaurus of Southern Utah. So on the underside of the third largest natural bridge in the world, uh, the Kachini Bridge, several uh, petroglyphs and pictographs exist, with rock art experts believing are uh, believed to be somewhere between 500 and 1,500 years old. 500, 1,500 years so this is like post-Jesus. Right, this is recent. Uh, the carvings are believed to be the work of the Anazi Indians who once lived in the area of southern Utah, or southeastern Utah. A mountain goat, a human figure, multiple handprints, and other carvings and drawings can be seen quite easily underneath the bridge on both sides of the span. The most fascinating piece of the rock art in the Kachini Bridge, however, is the pectroglyph of a dinosaur located to the right corner of are the right of the span from about 10 feet from the ground. The figure, which is carved into rock, has a long, thick tail, a long neck, wide mid midsection, and a small head. The unbiased visitor to Kachini Bridge would have to admit that this particular petroglyph looks like a dinosaur, specifically an Apatosaurus, more popularly known as a Brontosaurus. Brontosaurus. Bronto, Brontosaurus. Bronto. So uh, there, there's a couple things. There's there's some petroglyphs and and some drawings and cave art and and carvings that uh, and there's many many more. I just didn't want to put them all in here. Uh, that uh, kind of give some inclination that there's some sort of insight to what they could have looked like, right? Because 1,500 years ago. They weren't digging up dinosaur bones and, and using computer mo uh, model imaging to say, hey, this is what a dinosaur could have looked like, mm -hmm. right? And so, well, how'd they know what they looked like then? And how are they still represented kind of what we think as today with all of our computer imaging stuff? Like That's that's definitely the, the one of the questions. So, I, I to me, it's not a, hey, this is the nail in the coffin, but it's like, huh, well, if, if it's this old, right, and, and there was the, these things were around, it's hard to just say it was it was a mythical creature, right? I don't know. That's just my my perception of it, I guess. So you you look like you're looking into something. I am because the biggest question I've always had is is have we ever found human remains with dinosaur bones? Like that is one question I've always had. 
Well, yeah, but even if you had human remains with dinosaur bones, doesn't mean anything. Right, because it says, this is an article, it says, it has long been stated that since human and dinosaur fossils are never found together, therefore they do not coexist. And this person, Brody Hage, takes issue with this fallacy. Mm. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there, I think, that you could look to and, and go through it yourself. But let's continue on since we're already on. Yeah, keep going. Hour. No, no, keep so, going. You keep uh, going. Where are the dinosaurs today, basically, right? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, are, are they around? Are they not around? You know, there, there's been some rumors. Oh, we caught this over in the South China Sea. There's We caught something that looks like a, what are they called? A, not a, um, the, the sea swimming ones. Uh, Prehistoric marine reptiles? No. What are they called, though? There you got the bronchiosaurus, you got the stegosaurus. What, there's something that they're called, and I forget what they're called. But anyways, they, so found, I they found out. I, I've heard rumors of, oh, there's pterodactyls in Paris. You know, they fly around. The oh, the flying the, dinosaurs. Well, there's those too, but that's what I'm saying. The pterodactyls, the flying dinosaurs. Yeah, pterodactylists. And- right. So, uh, so uh, where are they today? From a biblical perspective, the most likely explanation for the extinction, uh, extinction of the dinosaurs is a worldwide flood described in Genesis 6 and 7, right? If they were around with humans, more than likely, that probably would have wiped most of them out. Mm -hmm. Soon after the flood, mankind began to rapidly decrease in size and the length of years. There was a class of very large animals which perished at the flood. God knew the strength of man would decrease, and the mammoth animals could not be controlled by feeble men. This is what BibleInfo.com says. Um, So could the flood be what David was referring to in Psalm 74? Uh, and that's where it said you divided the sea with your strength and smashed the heads of the sea monsters in the water. You crushed the heads of the Leviathan. You fed him to the creatures of the desert, Mm -hmm. right? That was what David said in Psalm 74. And I would say my opinion is it's plausible, right? I don't think there's enough definitive evidence to say, yeah, that's exactly what, what David was describing was the flood waters, and that's how the, the sea Lord monsters and crush the head. And well, well the Lord is Isaiah. That's Isaiah. This is Psalm, yeah. right? But if he was going to kill the sea monsters, mm-hmm. right, and he split the waters and he fed them to the desert, a worldwide flood would make sense of how he could possibly do that, right? So it's plausible, but not definitive. Mm-hmm. So I guess at, at this point, right? Do yes. we do we have evidence? Do we have enough evidence to say yes? They walk with. I think if we if we look at the the Genesis one account, and if God truly created everything, and was done with creation at the end of the seventh day, and mm-hmm. we take those days literally, I would say yes. At some point, humans roam with the dinosaurs. What happened to the dinosaurs? There are a couple plausible reasons of things that could have happened. One, I think that time that time spans that we don't know about. There's something could have happened in there. Mm-hmm. I, I find it hard to believe, though, because, uh, you know, uh, uh, between a- Adam and Eve leaving the garden, um, and my only thing is, is no sin means no death. Death is a result of sin. So the animals back then probably wouldn't have died until pff, after they were getting kicked out of the garden. Okay. So that's point number one, right? That's that, So I would say that they probably live with Adam and Eve at least. Um uh, the most plausible why they're not around for me scripturally, what I'm looking at is um, the short lifespan. I think uh, maybe they just died off extinction. There could have been some other catastrophe. We know there was a worldwide flood and that probably took out most of them. There was the mighty men of old. Maybe they did some of it. Maybe, maybe the Nephilim took care of it. I, I, there's nothing definitive beyond that, but we, we see some stuff and um, where, where, David talks about God had wiped out the sea monsters. We, we, whatever that sea monster is, he God wiped them out. So God killed some. We see that from David. Mm-hmm. But I think naturally over time, maybe just they died out. You know, but at, at the same time, like like some of what I was reading was the fact of why don't we ever find them together? And there's there's obviously some interpretations that we have because we believe that the earth we're looking at right now, although separated and maybe it was one big massive landmass, it could have been that these dinosaurs lived on a whole other different part of the world, like the Americas, than where humans lived. And so there is a the possibility of the reason why we don't ever see humans with man fossils is because of the fact of when the flood happened, the center of populace was all in one giant area and animals were kind of scattered all across the different parts of God's creation. And so when the floods did happen, it you know, they were already separated. But, you know, I do think there's a level of... But separation, all right, look at ma- mass flood. What does it do? Well, no, 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 no. I agree with it. Uh, that wipes. Well, but it doesn't just wipe off 
the 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 surface it digs into the ground right. and wipes things out. So I mean, you would think you would still see stuff mixed up. Right? In some regards, yeah. So I I would just caution, I would just caution that we don't know it's speculation. So don't die on any hill. That's where that's where my final word on it is. Right, is that you can't speculate. And I get what you're saying. Right, there, mm-hmm. there's no evidence that that so far that we found any dinosaur bones and human bones that we know of found together. together. But here's here's the big thing. Okay, is, is it opinion time? Sure. Okay. Yeah, so that, well, we're we're down to opinion time, and then I got one last little small thing. Okay. Cool. Say. So so my, you know my opinion with the dinosaurs is is multifaceted. You know, in in one regards, I do believe that a lot of what we have created dinosaurs to be is is false. I do think a lot of times that they take like one bone from one dinosaur, which is true. There are some dinosaurs that they have found like one or two bones. They're like, oh, this must be a dinosaur because sure. they, they go, okay, how how deep down, what layer of sediment? Oh, it must be a dinosaur, so we do it there. And so I do think that a lot of dinosaurs that we actually have, this is just my opinion here, sure. is sometimes different species of the same thing. Like if you find 10 different dog bones at different layers, they would say, oh, those are 10 individual different dogs in different layers and different times and different millennia, different centuries, whatever. Whereas first like, nah, bro, like a Chihuahua is the exact same as like um, a, a St. Bernard as a is a Maltese. A dog. It's a dog. Sure. It's a dog. And so with these dinosaurs, I do think that there was such a thing as a T-Rex because we have the we have the um the skull. skull and we have other pieces and we have you know the stegosaurus with the bumps we see the pictures that have different things so they had sure. to be around in some regards so i do think they did they did walk i don't fully understand why the bones aren't together but i do think in some regards when we have these different dinosaurs i asked the question of are there really this many dinosaurs or are people starting at the simple fact of since they're at different layers they must have been different dinosaurs that have evolved over time and now we're trying to pinhole all these different things that we see so we're creating this massive species of all the dinosaurs that we see sure i do fully believe that there are such things as dinosaurs but i do think that if we found certain skeletons of animals right now and we stick them back then we just maybe assume those are dinosaurs that's why some christians don't believe in dinosaurs that these things are just mm. fictitious that's like oh that, that's just an ancient giraffe and that's well, just an ancient this and that's just an ancient elephant and but that's then, just an ancient that but then you know? I, yeah, again i go back to the job 41 and how descriptive that was and i agree and i agree with you so right. i i fully believe that there were dinosaurs out there i do think a lot of animals that we have today are very similar to what the dinosaurs are and i've even pl- like there's like that game out there right now where it's you know take the yeah take you the showed skull of the hippo and then an artistic rendering of a hippo but what it really is right same with all these different animals so i really do think there are such things like the t-rex and the triceratops and the stegosaurus and the brachiosaurus because we do have fossil records for all these animals but the question is is why don't we see them anymore and i think it's the fact of you know maybe like other species that we've had we in our own lifetime have seen species gone extinct yeah. or almost gone extinct sure so there could have been plenty of animals that gone extinct and yep. maybe the world was built different way back in the day where the animals were just bigger the same way the way humans were just built well and we have to also and too and we also have to keep into mindset that animals roamed right right and that's what and, 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 no 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 and that's and exactly we, what i was saying is animals we typically went whoosh, out in rome and roamed and then humans stayed in one populous typically area we stayed in one populous and right, that, that's exactly. what i was saying before and maybe that's where i didn't but, segue that well but the, the, yeah i mean that could be but i would still think that we would see something, right? Uh, right. And eventually we would we see may. something here, but you know, dinosaurs could be roaming all these other parts around the But what I'm saying is the globe. We have not excavated every inch of this earth. No. And, and in fact, and most fossils very well we found are water fossils. And for a fo- and they've even shown that in order for a fossil to happen, it can't happen slowly. It's got to happen rapidly too. Right. Exactly. And so there is a level of that. So do I think a lot of these dinosaur fossils we're finding are real? Yeah, I actually do. Sure. I believe they're real bones. I believe they're real animals. So here's why I caution, right? So for, and I agree with you, right? Okay. Because we, we, maybe we don't have as many species as dinosaurs as what we think we do, right? Right. Um, I, I remember that when they said that they found the missing Neanderthal, right? It proves evolution. And then it came out later on that, no, it was like, Big jaw. Bo- it was, it was bones from a, from an ape and then bones from a human that they mixed together to make, prove their story. And so, right. and, and so a, I agree with a, you. There's that a, there's some a slight, people try to fit the narrative. There's into a their slight bill. distrust yeah. I have with some of the, some, not all, but some of the scientific community when they go, uh, I'm, I just proved this beyond a shadow of a doubt because of this. And it's like, mm, but that's the only one you found. 
Right. So like there are it's happen? wild because there's some dinosaurs that Elliot has in his dinosaur encyclopedia where it's like we only have one bone of this specific dinosaur. Right, like, this is what it looked like. Yeah. What How do you heck? know that? Right. It's the same idea where they found like some pieces off of the, like you said the missing link where it's like oh we found these couple different bones and so it, then all of a sudden it becomes all these big things and I'm like we're trying and this is where I again and I not again but this is where I agree with you where when we try to start with science and then pigeonhole our way through we're just desperate trying to find all these different things and so far everything we found is lined up with the bible in terms of an orderly creation creation right. that makes sense everything in their own species so i agree with you that the bible and we believe and i fully believe that god created everything and it was good and it was in decency and it was what it was in order and as long as someone believes in that rather than these different species evolving over time to become what we have today, I think you're you're okay. Now, I do think that there's a lot of people are, are I mean, let's be honest, people just love conspiracy theories too. I don't think the dinosaurs are fake. I do think the dinosaurs are real. I mean, yeah. go to Chicago Museum of Science and Industry and see Susan. Or Sue? Susan? Susan, I think. There's like 97% of like of her bones that they found, 95, yeah. something like that. And the it's T-Rex. A, the T-Rex, and it's yep. a beautiful, magnificent beast. Right. And so there had to have been something like that. Right. It's just a question of, did they walk with man or not? I think that well, is one and, of the big questions. And the other question is, is the rendering, the 3D model rendering, what it actually looked like? Because all we have is the bones. And we saw like the hippopotamus one, right? Is you know, And then you mentioned that, that I think, last week when we were just chit-chatting about it. Yeah. You're like, it could have looked like a big giant chicken. And I'm like, it could have. <laughs> I mean, we, we don't know, really. And, and you know, it could have, like you said, just as the age of people, stop living so long age of animals maybe stops living so long you know after the fall of adam and eve look at the years right a adam was 900 I mean, even was creation's 900. growing out you know yeah, right so you know if, it, right so things are dying out faster than what they were back at their at the fall mm -hmm. so maybe it's just maybe if certain animals certain lizards certain reptiles could live 900 years maybe they'd be big dinosaurs Maybe that's what it was. Who knows? But I, you know, you said one thing that's real important, and I think we gotta we gotta come back to it is that when we look at things in the Bible, we gotta stick with what we know, and then everything else is just speculation, right? We mm -hmm. can speculate all day long, and yes, there's some things that we're like, oh, we discovered this, but then there's other things. It's like, okay, we discovered one percent. We're coming up with a whole dinosaur out of this one percent of the bone structure of this and, and a lot of times animal. they do that because of where they found it in the sediment next to other ones and so then they just make the assumption of now they are logical assumptions i'm not sure. saying these dudes are a bunch of idiots sure like it's a logical assumption they make however the problem is is it's because they're starting at the point of billions and billions of years that's their starting point right whereas if we have a starting point of no god created everything we haven't answered everything and that's the thing of you know, the th this is what I actually truly do enjoy about Answers to Genesis, and I don't think it's a dangerous mindset to have, is they flat out said, no, they have given logical answers for all these different things in the same way that evolutionists had all these logical answers that they think of. Sure. And again, it goes back to what's your starting point? What's your foundation? How does all the things go? But at the end of the day, if people say, no, there's no such thing as dinosaurs, all these bones are fake, in my opinion, you're an idiot. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like, we I have agree. them. But at the same time, we can't just make something out of nothing to try to fill the pigeonhole gaps in between all the different things. So if you were to ask me, Mark, do you think that humans walk with dinosaurs? i say, heck yeah, but they ain't living by them. Right. In the same way where, you know, like like people who live in Africa and the Sahara, they ain't living amongst the lions. Right. Like, exactly. they have to protect their fields from the lion. They have to protect their fields from these right. wild animals. And so it's like, yes, they have to live in and amongst and in between all these different animals. But at the same time, I mean, your boy ain't setting up his family shop right next to the T-Rex. <laughs> That's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. So sure. I do think that we have to understand, you know, yes, the world is different. We don't fully know. But what do we know? We can see what we find from archaeological evidence. Right. But there's answers that the Bible proves that, yes, this actually all lines up with everything we've said so far. Yeah. That's my right. final thought. All right. My final thought is actually not even my final thought. It's something from Christianity.com. Oh, okay. And it's it, my thing is, does this matter, right? Does, does, this, does whole, this actually matter? Does this whole conversation actually matter? And this is what they have to say. It says, it matters in a sense that we can see God's fingerprints all over creation. There you go. Including the dinosaur fossils we pass in museums. It also matters in the sense that if animals mentioned in Job are, in fact, dinosaurs mm -hmm. this concludes humans and dinosaurs overlapped in a time period of existence however all in all whether job referred to di i can't even say diplodocus it. diplodocus no, or no, a, diplodocus or a hippopotamus 
I can say that one. This does not affect major doctrinal issues in the Bible. Nope. We should keep in mind, Scripture doesn't mention every animal that ever came into existence. This does not mean God didn't have a hand in creating all living things because simply they don't receive a specific remark in the Bible. Like the tiger is not mentioned in the Bible. Or the liger. The tiger, lion, crossbreed. Or the zebra. Or the zonkey. <laughs> the zonkey. All these yeah. different animals. Yeah, so just because it's not mentioned doesn't mean they didn't exist. Uh, we have some things that could have been them, but mm, it doesn't specifically call them dinosaurs. So that's what we're left with, and that's why it matters. What it matters is that we see God's fingerprints, right, everywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. That's what it should always lead us back to is that we can see intelligent design and a creator in all of creation. And that's it. It's like when you look at all of this, even if you look at stuff and go, you all, all you have to say is go, holy crap, this is awesome. Or you just go, wow, right. like what? Like we have all these different things. And that's where I always go back to so hard where it's the fact of, you know, is there actual archaeo- – people say, oh, there's proof in evolution. There's archaeology evolution. There's been so many things that have disproven it as well. Right. It all goes back to the fact, though, that we have to admit that all things came from something. We have these alpha particles and alpha, uh, some some sort of ray where all, everything yeah. seems to start at one point. Right. And that's what – oh, it must be the Big Bang. And reality's like, no, that's when God spoke it into existence. So <laughs> it went. And one day we'll know the answers. One day sure. it'll all be true. And that's why – you know, I kind of go back to this whole thought of, you know, when you start with the fact that Jesus died and rose again, and we see that as proof and evidence, then we start studying the Old Testament, then we're reading it back into the New Testament, and then we read the New Testament back in the Old Testament. All it points back to the fact of God created, Jesus came and redeemed, and Jesus will come back and restore. Right. Yep. I like it. Cool. Fun fact time? Let's do it. Time for Fun Facts with February. <laughs> Who knew we were going to go that long on dinosaurs? Oh, my Even goodness. though, let's be honest, most of that conversation wasn't even about dinosaurs. It was about yeah. creation, how it all sets up, and all but kind it, of fun it all, stuff. It all plays into it, right? So, I agree. Another part, and this plays into the fun fact Ooh, of God's okay. creation, is okay. something that's really interesting. Okay. Did you know? I saw I stopped reading fun facts, so I'm learning with the people today. Did you know that you can actually hear rhubarb grow? It pops like the like the like the root like the rhubarb the rhubarb plant the, yeah. that you eat make rhubarb pie. Yeah. you can actually hear it grow. It actually pops. Really, this is because of how fast it grows. It can grow up to an inch per day. That's pretty that solid. So you actually hear it go. Pop, pop. So it can wow. actually squeak and make other noises because it grows really? so fast every single day. That must be why I have all these creaking and popping sounds is because I'm growing you, every you, day. You I can get man. taller. He's like, yeah, I'm on a stretcher. <laughs> I had a buddy of mine. He's uh, exact same age as me. Went to college with him. He's from here in Michigan. And he goes, man, the older I get, the more I feel like I'm a freshly poured bowl of Rice Krispie treats. And snack. It's snack. Crackle, crackle and pop, pop. baby. Yep. All over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So That's yeah. Awkward transition. All right. Well, uh, anyway, we're both uh, tired. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us talking about dinosaurs today. And if you guys want to join more of the conversations, head over to the Facebook Real Talk Christian Podcast Community. That's our group page. Yep. A couple questions. Join up. Have conversation. Not just with us, but with the six hundred and ten other 600 people. Six hundred more. Hopefully, more by the point that this episode probably, comes out. Probably. And you can also find us over on our YouTube channel, where you could actually see our wonderful faces. In fact, it's been really fun to see the comments where they go, I came to YouTube just to see if your faces matches your voice. And so many times, apparently, they think your voice is me and my voice is you, which I, I think know. is hilarious. So they think you're monotone and I'm not. I don't know, man. I, don't, I, don't, I, I just I find it really, it. really, really funny. It's probably because yeah. you're the jolly old man. And they're like, ah, he must be the the eclectic voice no that's that's only the I'm one and only crap. mark Hyde. <laughs> but either way so make sure you check us out over on youtube and wherever you listen to podcasts you can't subscribe but you can follow and you can also leave a rating and review if you have any question you would love us to answer on the show first head to the website see if we've already covered it first because we have almost 200 episodes in the bank and you can search for an episode there but if you do have a question you want us to answer here on the show hit us up at real talk christian podcast at gmail.com or find our phone number socials all that stuff over at real talk christian podcast.com anything else for me before we let these people go no sir all right my friends we'll see you guys next week same time same place but until then take it easy 